Hello, my name is Paul McGinnis, and I'm here speaking with uh, former Fremont Fire Chief Dan Lydon. Born in the city of Oakland, uh, my parents had emigrated here from Ireland in the uh, 20s. How did you get involved in the fire service? When I got out of high school, I was in the Marine Corps Reserve Program and uh, attended um, an evening school class at Oakland High School taught by now retired assistant chief of the Oakland Fire Department, Bob McHugh. Just as I turned 21, uh, the exam for the city of Fremont came up. I took it in the uh, around November of 62 and was appointed March 15th, 63. I've seen the picture where they have a, a group of you. So when I was 18, was hired on that particular day, which I think was the first largest, uh, first class of that size, certainly, for the city. It's the first significant size class. What was the actual founding date of the Fremont Fire Department? Was it when the city was incorporated in 1956, or was it when the uh, public safety officers or public safety organization was disbanded in 58? Uh, maybe you could go in a, to a little more detail. I can shed some light on it. Uh, I, I wouldn't want it to be uh, interpreted as absolute history, but um, when the city formed in January 23rd of 1956, in essence, the first department to really function was the fire department. That was largely because uh, the members of those, the, that the members of the fire department were in essence county employees at that time, those that were employed. And uh, the county had five fire districts in the city of Fremont's uh, perimeter boundaries that had been in existence for quite a while. Uh, each of the five communities had their own fire department and it was all volunteer service. Both came along the need for a full-time presence uh, came into being and certainly in the Niles and the Centerville area were the first two to have uh, a, uh, a full-time presence. As the city moved toward incorporation, those employees became the city's first employees, which uh, had selected members of that operation be both serve in a fire and police function. Certainly the volunteers uh, played a large part in the formation of the city of Fremont. I would concur wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, the, as I noted a, a moment ago, the um, the fire stations provided a physical structure that was the physical hub of each of the communities. Uh, they were designed in such a way that they had large meeting rooms in the built each of the five buildings. Uh, given the Centerville probably being the biggest, Niles, and then they worked its way down. But it was recognized that people in the community would come together, would meet there, and uh, things other than the operation of the fire department were often discussed and had some source of life there. When you first came to Fremont, uh, did you, was there a fire academy that you went through or a training period where you... Uh the city contracted with the state of California, which uh, was somewhat uh, the norm for cities like this, uh, this size, they didn't have established training divisions. We had people assigned to the function, but they contracted with the state of California to bring in instructors. And we, were, uh, we went through uh, something that was uh, certainly not as, uh, sophisticated as the academy today, but it was very thorough for its time. It covered, uh, if I remember right, it was six weeks. Firefighter Association, but no union, is that correct? Correct, okay. absolutely. Um, Actually, uh, in the city, it, there wasn't really a Firefighters Association immediately, and that didn't come into being until the, the early part of, I'd say, 62, to 63 that came about and it was it was nebulous then because there was a city employee organization that uh, at that time represented the all the city employees fire police 
miscellaneous, et cetera, throughout the city. So uh, it was from, and, and that organization, if you will, was preceded by the five firemen associations, as they were called then, uh, from the different uh, uh, districts in the yeah. city. All right, Chief Lyden, uh, you, you were fire chief here and uh, you retired in 2001, is that correct? Uh, two. 2002. Okay, so you've yeah. seen a lot of changes in oh, yeah. the city itself. Can you describe uh, how the city has changed uh, over the years? And Well, one big change, uh, in terms of uh, geography, the city has come together. I mean, in 1963, when I came to work here, the five districts were truly districts. There was there was distance between them, and and you you knew when you were entering one or leaving another. So certainly today, as I look at the city, it's one continuous metropolis, and that is probably one of the biggest changes. And there's uh, significant growth in areas that were. You know, in my mind, that in those days, you know, nothing will ever happen out here, and uh, it's completely different. So you started off as a firefighter in 1963. Yes. And what year did you become a captain in, in the fire department? I can't answer that specifically, but I was a lieutenant. Oh, you first. were a lieutenant. Oh, that's right. right. We had lieutenants, and I'd say that happened in the late 60s, early 70s. I'd say by 71, I was probably a captain. Okay. And then uh, you became a battalion chief after that? Yes, in 76, I believe. 76. Mm -hmm. And then you became fire chief in? 87. 87. It was on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, it was. was. That's right. I believe the late 70s, early 80s, that the firefighters themselves went out and got their EMT, emergency medical technician certificates. Yeah. There was no requirements by the city, mm -hmm. no requirements by the county, but they did it on their own. And I think that's kind of indicative of, of the people that worked here and that still work here, is that they, they show incentive <coughs> when it comes to benefit the community. <coughs> and what a lot of people don't understand is that the paramedic program in the city of Fremont, was, it was generated from within the fire department to a certain extent. Um, in the 90s, you certainly had uh, studies that showed that the save rate in the city of Fremont was it the highest in the nation or one of the highest in the nation. And it's been the model for, here I'm on a pontificating, but it's been the model for all the other fire departments in, in most of California. Now we have a lot of training requirements that are mandated by the government, uh, by state and federal government. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot of training that goes on now. And uh, we but certainly- But don't you think and, and, and again, this is almost like a, a self-serving or, or, or a patting ourselves on the back type of thing. The presence of the city of Fremont firefighters and the others who were part of it at Katrina mm -hmm. in New Orleans changed everyone's opinion across this country as they looked at those tapes and saw the degree of service and skill and ability that they brought to that operation that was otherwise fumbling. Yeah. We can't let go of that. Exactly. Hey Chief, but uh, I appreciate you uh, speaking with us. Um, all right, thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>